Hello, greetings, and welcome to Chapter 6 on Balances and Open System. So in Chapter 6, our goal is to extend our first and second law from Chapter 3 and 4, where in Chapter 3 and 4, we looked at closed systems here to open systems, where we'll consider flow streams entering and exiting our systems, which can carry with them mass, energy, and entropy. So just like our previous chapters, specifically Chapter 3 and 4, here, I'll spend virtually no time, uh, you know, lecturing. Uh, if this were a normal class, I uh, will assume that you have read the textbook and most of class time or most all of class time would be spent working through problems in which we can have further discussion. Okay, and so in terms of, you know, what we'll look at in, in this class or in this uh, chapter. So again, this is chapter six. And so we're interested in taking our first and second law, which we've developed for closed systems and extending it to open systems. And so we'll consider, so here's um, an example of uh, uh, some um, open devices that we'll consider in this chapter, compressors, turbines, heat exchangers, and, and such. And so again, we'll work through a series of example problems in which we'll take our uh, first and second law, extend it to open systems, and apply them to these special cases. Okay. And so just a couple of notes on our general uh, first law balance. All right, and so first here I have our first law balance for uh, closed system, which we developed in chapter three. So delta U is equal to Q plus W. Okay, so um, Q here, right, would correspond to heat added to or removed from our system, and then W, right, this is our network. Okay, and so in general we said that could refer to work in the form of PV boundary work uh, done by or on our system. It could also include shaft work. In chapter three, we restricted ourselves to PV boundary work because we said if we had shaft work, the problem would have to tell us something about how to calculate uh, that term or what that term is. So now when I compare that to our general first law of balance for open systems, uh, which I have here, okay, the first thing I'll notice is that I have an accumulation term here, du total dt, so this is my non-steady state term. And then my term in brackets here on the left, right, my delta, so change between my difference between my final and initial state. So here I have a difference or change due to kinetic energy, potential energy, and now instead of internal energy here, I have H, enthalpy. Okay, and so, you know, how you can picture this is if I'm dealing with flow systems, if I think of, say, the fluid flowing through my pipe in a, in a hockey puck, all right, that hockey puck as it's flowing needs to displace the hockey puck in front of it. All right, and so, you know, essentially the work due to do that is in the form of PV boundary work, right, which would be equal to PV. And so here we replace U with, with H, right, to account for this work needed to displace the fluid element in front of me. Okay, and then on the right hand side I have Q and W. Okay, I should note that these dots correspond to rates. So M is going to be my mass flow rate. Then Q dot and W dot would be a rate, right? Rate of heat transfer uh, and rate of work. So when I look at my work term, okay, the one thing you'll note is I have a subscript S. The reason for this is when we're considering our flow systems, so when we look at those devices that we just had on the page above, our work term here will be concerned with shaft work, okay? So we're, we're not going to consider or we won't be concerned with PV boundary work for the operations just listed but instead we'll be looking at work in terms of uh, shaft work. Okay. So subscript here S uh, corresponds to shaft work. Um, for a steady state process, okay, accumulation term is going to go to zero. Um, and then, you know, we won't have, we'll assume we don't have a chemical reaction or anything um, else going on. So if our mass flow rate is constant, we end up with just our term here, delta, change in kinetic potential, uh, and then enthalpy, and on the right-hand side, Q plus WS corresponding to my shaft work. If we were to further, you know, assume that the change in kinetic energy and potential energy is negligible, these two terms would go away, and we would just be left with delta H is equal to Q plus WS, right? So, again, contrast that to our first law for closed systems, where now instead of delta U, we have delta H, and on the right-hand side, our work term here, we're only going to be concerned with shaft work. Right? We're not going to be concerned with PV boundary work. 
All right, and then just two you know, final comments. We'll look at two more cycles. Okay, the first cycle we'll look at is power generation, so namely a Rankine cycle, in which our goal is going to be to you know, add heat to our system with the goal of generating work or producing work in a turbine. Okay, and so we'll go through the analysis of our Rankine uh, power plant or power generation cycle, emphasize that it's a cycle, just like when we performed our analysis of our Carnot cycle, we'll start and end at the same point. And then we'll also consider a refrigeration cycle. Okay, where here our goal is, so I need to picture this one a little differently, is you know down here, right? Imagine I have say my refrigerator, the contents of my refrigerator, or maybe the contents of my house in a summer. And so my goal here in my refrigeration process, um, so let's take my house as an example, where I turn on my air conditioner in the summer with the goal of removing heat from my house, right? So refrigeration processes is, is different in that we're taking heat from a cooler body, my house in the summer, okay, and we're rejecting it to a hotter body, right? This would be the heat rejected outside of my house in my um, condensing coils um, outside my house, right? That's the box outside with the big fan on top. So in a refrigeration process, okay, again, here's my house down here. My goal is to remove heat from my colder body. Okay, reject that heat to a hotter body, and in order to move heat from a low body, low temperature body, to a hot temperature body, right, which is outside, right, I need to put work in, right, and so work is going to come in here in my compressor. Okay, and we'll go through the analysis of our power generation and refrigeration cycle, um, but after we've talked about or discussed the application of our first and second law balance on each of these individual units, our strategy is essentially going to be to take our process one piece at a time right, and use that to characterize each of our streams in our cycle. Okay, So hopefully that gives you a very basic overview of what we're going to tackle in Chapter 4. Again, if this were a normal class, most all of our time would be spent solving problems, working with our equation, seeing how to simplify our equation and apply it to particular uh, pieces of equipment. And through that analysis, um, we can have some further discussion or hopefully make connections uh, so that things begin to make sense. If you have any questions, as always, please do not hesitate to ask. We'll see you in the first example problem.